I'll say it. Mountain Monsters is the greatest Bigfoot hunting show ever made. The man in the black cloak. How'd they know we was here? What's he doing? Appalachian investigators of mysterious sightings are unlike any other Bigfoot hunting group on TV. People's feet in your face, toes in your mouth. Not only do they quickly find Bigfoot, but they are quick to throw hands with everyone, including Bigfoot. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, yeah! Other Bigfoot shows go out into the wild with very little hope of actually capturing or encountering the creature. But in Mountain Monsters, Bigfoot is always just like right off camera and he's a real threat. Bigfoot just pulled that tree down. But it's not just Bigfoot. There's these other paranormal creatures who have like superpowers or something. The Ames team is always getting hypnotized or possessed. Huckleberry. It goes off the rails so quickly. There's like paranormal ghouls and ghosts and farmhouses that teleport to all the different states they go to because they only have one set. Not to mention the door that just appears in the middle of the woods or in the middle of a cornfield that's a portal to another world, maybe. Who was that? I don't know. The only boundaries of this world is that of their imagination. Yeah, this is Billiam, and if you could subscribe, like this video, and comment down below, that'd be appreciated. About a year ago, I did a video about this show just talking about how unapologetically fake it was, but I couldn't help but to enjoy watching it. Shamelessly pretending is the greatest thing that ever happened to Bigfoot shows. That is massive. Bigfoot best. Since we last caught up with these guys, they upgraded their gear and production value with so many more creatures to take down. But when things become paranormal, will they succumb to the darkness? <laughs> Jeff? Jeff? What are you doing? Jeff! Get him, bud! About halfway through the run of this show, because yeah, I've caught up with the entire thing, Mountain Monsters decided to start heavily serializing its story. Like storylines that begin in season five have yet to wrap up in season eight. Yes, this show has gone on for eight seasons with a ninth season coming this year. Over the seasons, the Ames team has seen many threats. There was a rival Bigfoot hunting team who kidnapped the Ames team and sent them on a quest to the dark forest. Then they had to fight the Death Cat, the Coyote King, Smoke Wolves, Dogs, Kittens, the legendary Grafton Monster, and of course, multiple Bigfoot, Big Feet. That's not a Bigfoot. That's two Bigfoots. They do this to track down the ultimate boss cryptid, their arch nemesis, beer finger of Native American folklore. I've got Cherokee blood coursing through my veins. Yep. I'm very proud of my Native American roots. These guys don't downplay anything. It is a hillbilly D&D &D session complete with monsters, curses, combat, quests, leveling up. Buck used to be the rookie, now he's the expert caller. <laughs> so let's look at the greatest paranormal TV show of all time. This year, I've been doing a lot of traveling for projects that I'm almost ready to be excited to share with you. But being on the road usually means fast food, which just kills my energy, which is why I'm happy to be resetting my healthy habits with Factor. With Factor, you can choose from over 34 flavor packed, dietitian approved meals ready to eat in just two minutes. It's so easy, I swear, you just gotta press a few buttons. For my Protein Plus meal, I needed to try the blackened salmon with smoked Gouda cauliflower grits and broccoli. Because it sounded like a Gouda time. Don't believe me? Just ask Mr. Cheddar. A Gouda cauliflower grits got me feeling Gouda. The salmon was moist and seasoned very well. I love getting my greens in during lunchtime, so the broccoli was the perfect side to this protein-packed meal. However, if you're looking for more calorie-conscious options, you can try some of the many calorie smart meals, all 550 calories or less. To get some tasty food, go to factor75.com or click the link below and use code Billium50 to get 50% 
20% off of your first factor box. Thanks, y'all. The Ames team of mountain monsters is the confident chaotic force the Bigfoot hunting world needs, becoming a caricature of the entire field. I love that they feuded with Finding Bigfoot on Twitter. Like, let these guys get at each other. The Finding Bigfoot guys called out mountain monsters for being fake, but then Trapper, the leader of mountain monsters, ratioed Bobo from Finding Bigfoot, calling their show Losing Bigfoot. <laughs> Tracking down Bigfoot on mountain monsters is not left to chance because they follow and decipher a long list of cryptic cryptid clues. It's like national treasure, but the national treasure itself is Bigfoot, which wasn't it always. Huckleberry is the team's security guy whose weapon of choice is an AR-15. In fact, the entire squad carries a whole arsenal with them, but it's because Huckleberry can sense trouble. You can feel the evil. Huckleberry has been to hell and back. He's had traumatic encounters with nearly every single monster they've gone up against. Changed my life. We had a blue tick named Bo, and he hit that big bastard with everything he had. We found parts of Bo. It's been 46 years since my encounter. There's not one day goes by that I don't think about this Bigfoot. Toes in your mouth. This thing damn near ruined my life. It ruined my brother. He almost lost himself to evil in the dark forest where the Cherokee Devil, a really scary Bigfoot, made him do some really weird stuff. I love them recounting these little events as lighthearted escapades because when they cut back to it, it is so f***ing disturbing. Look, we couldn't find you for a while. You went completely missing, dude. And you was butt naked. Plum out of it. Oh my gosh! Hey, 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 what oh, oh. Huckleberry. Huckleberry is the cryptid. Hey, speaking of big feet, look at this big pair of big feet right between me and Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Buck is the hot shot young protagonist of the show, having recently been promoted to the expert caller. He once fell over a lot for comedy, but now he calls the Coyote King or Bigfoot for drama. He's so serious about it. All right, guys, listen up. <laughs> when it comes to tree knocks, I mean, it's all in the hips. You gotta give it a little shake. Huckleberry went into a demonic trance, throwing himself into the freezing water, but Buck was there to rescue him and to get him all warm and snuggled up in the back of his truck. Buck found a way to warm himself up pretty quick. How's that? Pissed myself. <laughs> These guys love talking about peeing their pants all the time. Well, his pants are all wet. He pissed himself. And Jeff the Researcher is there to catch it all on the thermal cam. Willy and Wild Bill are like Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. Willy has never blinked once on camera, nor has he ever lowered his clock. You gotta check that out. He's a trained agent. Wild Bill is the expert tracker, a former Marine, and the loudest man you've ever met. Just yelling all the time about his love for monster poop. So I have become a professor in poop. Down to this pile of squash poop. It's beautiful. She's putting right like this right here. And I mean, he's getting in motion. <laughs> You're catching on to the tone of this show very quickly. Together, Bill and Willie build traps, which are usually just the same trap, but with a slightly different door or shape. But the boys always love it. Did a fantastic job on this trap. I mean, it impressed the hell out of me. They know they're not gonna actually catch a monster. They just love seeing them be creative. In their quest to find Spearfinger, the Ames team has to solve a lot of riddles. And with Trapper being on sick leave, they struggle with things like the mysterious triangle, which they found carved into the rocks. That's a triangle and it's carved into the rock. What is this? This show was mostly them finding these silly clues rather than the monsters. What is it? It's the letter F. What does this mean? They need to encounter six special cryptids to attract Spearfinger, who eludes them for multiple seasons. It's underwhelming, but then all of a sudden there's a demon door in the middle of a cornfield. <gasps> This is the second time I've seen a cloaked figure disappear through a door like that. How's this even possible? They tend to just say a whole lot of nothing in each episode. Like the confessionals literally just repeat what we just saw and after the commercial break, it will just be reiterated once more and holy shit, all of them repeat each other as well and then repeat themselves on the confessional. This show needs to be 20 minutes long. Well, get up there, 
We're gonna try out a couple tree knocks. The strategy for tonight is both teams are gonna do tree knocks and see if we can't get any sort of response. I'm going to stop the road. Buck told me him, Jeff, and Huckleberry pulled over. Between the driving footage and map graphics complete with the lovely little gunshot marker wherever they're going, we are made to believe that they travel all over Appalachia. But having watched eight seasons of this show, I think they just film in the same place all the time. You can't tell me that the evil barn and the evil red shed are on the same piece of land. We've seen that barn before. This is part of the quest for Spearfang. I know they say the building teleported, but I'm doubting it. <laughs> They're just reusing sets. Okay, so now Jeff is possessed and it's not even the first time he's been possessed. <laughs> he looks like he's going off to become an elf. Jeff, what are you doing? Jeff, get him, bud. He separates himself from the group and heads to the evil red shed where his mouth has been cut. My mouth's cut and he ominously alludes to something evil. He points to something buried neath the shed. Turns out it was the symbol for the Cherokee devil. But to Buck, something isn't adding up. And all of a sudden, we see a familiar skeleton. I'll explain. But the skeleton left them a package. What the hell's he want? So in the early seasons, every time you think they're about to find Bigfoot, the rogue team, the evil Bigfoot hunting team gets in their way somehow. Get me out of here. Easy now, Buck. Easy. Easy. Why am I in here? Ames is just always a few steps behind the rogue team, but they leave them clues. They can't be that bad. But they they did kill the stone giant, or a Bigfoot from an earlier season. They shot him. Anyways, they open up a package from the rogue team and are stunned at the sight. Oh! oh Whoa! What? Holy Son of a bitch. At this point, I've talked very little about Trapper, the leader of the Ames team, because his health started to decline outside of the show and his appearances dwindled until ultimately he died before the start of the seventh season. But he's still in the opening credits. R.I.P. Trapper. This show is his memorial. Look at this rainbow. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I can't help the feel. Like old Trapper was looking down from up above, smiling on us. My favorite Trapper moment is when he met the Sheep Squatch. You can imagine what kind of creature it is from the name. Anyways, the Sheep Squatch peed on him. Can't imagine anybody who'd come up with a scenario like that. Ah! 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 Suck it up, you son of a bitch, Trapper, suck it up! They have a nice tall glass of Sasquatch pee oh, yeah. in his memory, and the whole team can't help but to cry when Trapper's daughter and granddaughter, wearing Trapper's old hat, gives them clues. Um, my papa basically wrote everything that he did down and have this. Wow. Journal. From his monster hunting collection. In death, Trapper becomes a huge lore character in the show, replacing the rogue team as motivation for the Ames team, who now try to tie up some loose ends from Trapper's life, investigating decades old mysteries and learning his lore in the process. I do have to say season seven, the first season of Mountain Monsters without Trapper has to be the worst season of the show. That's right. I have Mountain Monsters hot takes, and I need somebody to listen to them. Thank you so much. I love you. Trapper was searching for smoke wolves. You see, North American wolf populations don't extend past the Mississippi River. They used to, now they don't. They're called smoke wolves because of their elusiveness, but they are indeed regular wolves. That's a wolf. Hell yes, that's a wolf. Looking at this picture, that's a wolf. So they spend an entire season looking for wolves, regular, old wolves in a place that does not have a wolf population. And the team must have rented out some wolves just for the production of the show because they fucking find them. We got wolves. Hell yeah, we, we got, got wolves. wolves. Oh, Trapper was right. There are wolves in West Virginia. Willie and Bill, who have never had a trap successfully work, are able to capture two pristine looking wolves that were absolutely found in a completely different location. It's like looking at royalty. You can't take your eyes off of them. It feels like they wanted to go for something a little bit more believable so they could deceive the audience. But to me, this show has never been about deception. It's about the wholesomeness of watching grown men have playtime in the woods and their brotherly bond for each other. You gonna come out outside beside, we're gonna tackle you to give you a hug. 
I can't wait. <laughs> if little scrapes and bruises could be healed with kisses, they'd all be kissing each other. I think they knew hunting regular wolves was a mistake because the first episode of the next season, they all start chanting Bigfoot. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, yeah! The later seasons firmly cement the Ames team as hillbilly sitcom stars who follow in the footsteps of their beloved leader, Trapper. Push, big foot, big foot. That's right, boys. That's right. No fart in my time. <laughs> Following Trapper's clues, they learn something bigger than Bigfoot. The Grafton monster has been terrorizing farms and killing cows. This means trouble. But I'm telling you, the Grafton monster, it's capable. The Grafton monster is a great cryptid who leaves great clues. Just making this cute little tree structure that keeps freaking the team out. Holy That son bitch has doubled in size since the last time we was here. They're just cartoons at this point, and their favorite jokes consist of bathroom humor all the time. Even Bigfoot joins in. They hear his gassy ass fart in the woods. It's gotta be the Ohio gas man. <laughs> Like sound like it ripped a big part. Did you hear that? These guys may only know three jokes, but I love watching them hoot and holler every single time. All you gotta do is say pee, fart, dick, or poo, and they're rolling. Brad, I'm just gonna start right off. I think you would fit in great with this crew with the hat, the beard, the bibs. I don't know. I don't know if he's big enough. <laughs> but if there's a bigger, take three of you to see me. <laughs> it fit right in, bud. And now every episode they have this like character development. Like Wild Bill asks Buck for advice on losing weight because he lost 130 pounds. Good for Buck. Dude, I, I know you cut a ass load of weight. Yes, sir. I got this little problem going on right here. I see what you're fueling the engine with. Right there you go, brother. Squatch jerky. Says squatch meat. It is gamey and delicious. And all Buck has to say is, Wild Bill, you gotta stop eating Sasquatch. Wild Bill eats Sasquatch. That's a canon event. Even their eyewitnesses are characters. This man believes glow sticks will scare away the Grafton monster, but he's actually a real one. Feeding the Ames team some pigs in a blanket. I want some fucking pigs in a blanket. I am always in the mood and ready for a 7-Eleven hot dog. He's awesome. And they are hungry. I think they put some in their pockets, but that's like a like a bag kind of thing. These guys love taking off their clothes and flirting with each other. Huckleberry stepped right up the plate and he said, I'll rub it on there for you, Jeff. Huckleberry with them big manly hands he's got, he grabbed up him a big handful of that aloe vera and rubbed them all over my breasts. It's brotherly love and it's exactly that that gets them to try to avenge Trapper's dog, Gus, who was killed by the Grafton monster. But the Ames team is on it. Bucky even saves a kitten from the monster's grasp. Oh crap, there's a kitten. You don't with a cat. You got I, blood? Uh, yeah, there's blood right here. Oh, it's personal now. When they hear that this teenager's dog has gone missing, they will do anything to help. Oh, can I help you guys? Even beat up the teenager uh -oh. to force him to accept their help. Come on, yo. Let's go. <laughs> Look. Damn it, I said stay here. I hear you. What the f going on here? So can we just calm down a minute and talk about this? How long ago did you lose your dog? People's feet in your face toes in your mouth. The Grafton monster is a lot to handle, but now there's two Bigfoot. They're having a turf war and the Ames team is getting in the middle of it. We're too damn close to that Grafton monster yeah. right now. That Bigfoot's coming out of the nest. He's heading straight towards the Grafton monster. Sounds like we got a turf war here. That son of a bitch is a smoke wolf. Let's get the hell out of here. The smoke wolves are even back. Oh, they need some help. Luckily, they recruit a new guy, Cowboy Ken, who owns a drone. The Ames team say they have the best in the business. We love positive reaffirmation. This thing is <laughs> awesome, huh? I can just feel the power. Oh. I can feel the breeze, yeah. boys, yeah! All right. <laughs> Yeah! Ken immediately proves his epic drone skills. B for Bigfoot footage, cause they fucking got him on camera. Son of a bitch! That Bigfoot just tore that tree down. Hell yeah! Such yeah. a Bigfoot. I really need a full costumed, reoccurring character next season for Bigfoot. Seasons nine and ten 
it's time guys. But we still haven't gotten to Spearfinger. It's been four seasons and we haven't seen Spearfinger. Are they gonna have this epic final battle? And the Skeleton Man with the Rogue Team, where have they gone? Is Expert Caller even Buck's final form? And Mountain Monster guys, if you guys are watching this video, Discovery is not paying you enough. Maybe talk to your fellow reality stars about that. I've also heard a lot of you suggest I check out Alaska Monsters, which is a similar format, but in a colder place. And I just might do that, but please comment down below what other paranormal shows or whatever else you would like me to check out. Unless these guys come out and say some really awful things, Mountain Monsters is always gonna be really wholesome in my mind because it's about a bunch of dudes just going out in the woods and being a bunch of silly billies, which I wouldn't know anything about. See ya.